Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hey there, and welcome to AutoLine Daily. I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist, filling in for John again. In the second half of the show, I will share my thoughts on how Jaguar's new marketing strategy is all wrong. But now, the news. Americans are driving fewer miles nowadays, and while the recession is part of the blame, a new report from the U.S. Public Interest Research Group says the average miles driven has been declining for eight years. Miles driven per capita peaked in 2004, and the average American currently drives the same number of miles as they did in the mid-90s. The decline is likely to continue because baby boomers are retiring and millennials are driving the fewest miles of any age group and they love their electronic devices more, which is giving the auto companies nightmares. The report concludes that the government needs to focus on repairing existing roads and bridges instead of expanding and building new roads. Earlier in the year, Cadillac announced it will offer a new twin turbo V6 for the CTS. And now the company says the 3.6 liter engine will be offered in the 2014 XTS as well. Good news. It cranks out 410 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque when made it to the XTS's six-speed automatic transmission. And in a somewhat surprising partnership, Nissan will build a rebadged version of its NV200 for General Motors called the Chevy City Express. The small cargo van will be sold in the U.S. and Canada starting in the fall of 2014. This is clearly GM's response to the Ford Transit Connect, and they needed to do something quick, so they went with Nissan. Pricing for the Chevy City Express will be announced at a later date, but the NV200 has a starting price just over $20,000. We are now one step closer to having a production version of the Acura NSX. The company announced it will build a supercar at a new performance manufacturing center in Ohio. The $70 million facility will employ approximately 100 workers. The NSX's hybrid powertrain will be built not too far away at Honda's engine plant in the state. Expect to see the new NSX sometime in 2015. Two years ago, South Korea lowered tariffs on European car imports, and now German luxury makers are reaping the benefit. According to Bloomberg, in the first quarter of this year, BMW, Audi, and Mercedes sales were up 25%, while Hyundai's luxury sales took a 5% dive. Koreans see Hyundai's luxury cars as overpriced gas guzzlers, so they're turning to German cars because of better quality and cheaper prices. And this is a huge problem for Hyundai because it relies heavily on profits from luxury sales in its home market. In a story we will have to keep our eye on, the American Civil Liberties Union filed a lawsuit against LA's two major police departments over information collected by electronic license plate scanners. The departments have used the scanners for years, which continuously scan license plates and check them against criminal databases. The ACLU has no problem with that, but they claim that the information collected and stored by the scanners could invade people's privacy. The data can be stored for upwards of five years and is not available for public records because it is deemed investigative material. The union thinks the departments should quickly erase information on cars and drivers not connected to any crime. According to a report, 71% of police departments in the U.S. use the scanners. Coming up next, Jaguar marketers travel to the planet tedious. Proven on the track and on roads around the world, Borg Warner turbochargers improve fuel economy and reduce emissions without sacrificing performance. Borg Warner, official turbocharger supplier to the IZOD IndyCar Series. We all know Jaguar, right? Classic British car company, fantastic historical relevance with its beautiful D-type racers and the vaunted XK120 sports car. Responsible for one of the greatest cars of all time, the timeless and fabulous E-Type, but doomed to producing wildly inconsistent production cars ever since. Bought and sold by Ford, now owned by the Indian industrial conglomerate Tata, they're now ready to capture the imagination of the consumer public once again with its expressive F-Type sports car. But that's not what will happen, because the strategic thinking behind the marketing is so wrong on so many levels, I hardly know where to begin. Jaguar's marketing brain trust have anointed the new F-Type as, are you ready for this? The baddest boy on the block. 
Really? They're going to spend $20 million to say that? It gets worse. In their minds, they're going to go up against the new Corvette and the new Porsche 911. Even in its brief heyday when the E-Type was the talk of the automotive world, Jaguar was never even remotely the baddest boy on the block. It was sleek, sophisticated, beautiful, and sexy, yes, but there was never a hint of badass associated with it, and for good reason, too. And nothing has changed. Despite its many missteps, Jaguar has managed to retain a shred of integrity all of these years. But clearly there was no one involved in this project with a modicum of sense, or history, or context, or hell, I don't know, even a hint of a clue. It gets even worse. Jaguar has also announced a deal to have the Playboy Playmate of the Year pose in front of an F-Type for a cover wrap on the June issue. Repeat that to yourselves, please. Slowly. No, I'm not kidding. I would imagine the Hooters sweepstakes giveaway is right around the corner, wouldn't you? I mean, if you're going to go down in flames, you might as well blow the whole thing to smithereens while you're at it, right? For the record, the ad campaign for the new F-Type is supposed to seduce alpha male types who love fast cars and sports and make at least $150,000 a year. Wow, that certainly narrows it a bit. If you're getting the picture that Jaguar marketers have traveled to the planet tedious, you would be correct. I won't bore you with the description of the advertising, but needless to say, the stewards of Jaguar have decided that they will use the launch of the F-Type to reinvent the brand so as to appeal to a whole new, hipper audience. In the process of doing so, they will likely turn the brand into a recurring joke. In other words, it's a double shot of not good with room for pathetic. And that's the high-octane truth for this week. Before I go, I want to remind you to watch Autoline After Hours this Thursday. My guest will be Jordan Lee, who's in charge of GM small block engines. Also joining me for that show is Gary Vasilash of Automotive Design and Production and Scott Burgess from Motor Trend. So tune in for the best insider discussion on the industry tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern at Autoline.tv. But that's it for today's show. Once again, I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist. Thanks for watching.